Have you ever wondered how the Dutch built their empire? It's a tale of canny trade, daring navigation, and unyielding ambition. In the late 16th century, the Netherlands was a nation on the rise. With a burgeoning economy and a thirst for exploration, the Dutch took their first steps beyond the confines of Europe. Their sights were set on the vast uncharted territories of the New World and the lucrative spice routes of the East Indies. The Dutch were not merely explorers, they were entrepreneurs. They understood that success in these new lands would require more than just bravery and boldness. It would demand exceptional skills in trade and transport. And so, they honed their expertise in these areas, developing efficient trade networks and advanced shipbuilding techniques that would set them apart from their European rivals. As the 16th century drew to a close, the Dutch reclaimed their lead at sea. Their ships, sturdy and swift, became a common sight in the waters of the Atlantic and the Indian Ocean. By the second half of the 17th century, the Dutch had not just gained dominance at sea, they were ruling it. This period of maritime mastery and economic prosperity is known as the Dutch Golden Age, a hundred years when the Netherlands, a small nation in Northern Europe, became one of the world's most powerful empires, an empire that was built not through military might, but through strategic trade and transport. But the Dutch were not content to rest on their laurels. They knew that to maintain their position, they would need to innovate. And so, following in Britain's footsteps, they ventured into the realm of corporate colonialism. They established the Dutch East India Company, or VOC, and the Dutch West India Company, or GWC. These companies would play a crucial role in the expansion of the Dutch Empire, setting the stage for a fierce rivalry with Britain. And thus the stage was set for the Dutch to embark on a journey of expansion and power. The dawn of the Dutch Empire had arrived, and its influence would be felt across the globe for centuries to come. The Dutch, however, had a unique approach to empire building. In an era where monarchs and sovereign states typically led the charge for colonial expansion, the Dutch turned to a revolutionary concept, corporate colonialism. The Dutch were astute traders with an enviable naval prowess. Yet, they understood that to truly dominate the high seas and establish a global empire, they needed an innovative strategy. Thus, they embraced corporate colonialism, a system where private corporations rather than the state took the helm of colonial expansion. In the 17th century the Dutch established two powerful corporations, the Dutch East India Company, known as the VOC, and the Dutch West India Company, or GWC. These were not just ordinary companies, they were granted state-like powers by the Dutch government including the authority to wage war, negotiate treaties and establish colonies. The VOC focusing on trade with Asia quickly became the world's first multinational corporation. It established a network of trading posts stretching from Cape of Good Hope to Japan, and it controlled the lucrative spice trade, making it one of the wealthiest corporations of its time. Parallel to the VOC, the GWC set its sights on the Americas and West Africa. It established colonies, trading posts and even pirated Spanish and Portuguese ships. It was instrumental in the Atlantic slave trade, a dark chapter in human history. These corporations were not just profit-driven entities, they were empire builders. Their vast networks of trading posts and colonies effectively extended Dutch influence across the globe, shaping the world as we know it today. They pioneered corporate governance structures and practices that are still in use by multinational corporations. But this corporate-led empire was not without its challenges. The VOC and GWC had to navigate the treacherous waters of international politics, competing against other European powers, particularly Britain, for global dominance. It was a high-stakes game, and the Dutch corporate colonial model was about to face its sternest test. These companies were the backbone of the Dutch Empire, and their influence was about to be challenged. As the Dutch Empire grew, so did its enemies. The 17th century was a time of fierce rivalry and competition among European powers, and the Dutch were no exception. The Dutch Empire, fueled by the might of the Dutch East India Company and the Dutch West India Company, was on the rise but this growth didn't go unnoticed. Across the North Sea the British Empire watched with a wary eye. The British and the Dutch, though similar in many ways, were also vastly different. The British Empire was a traditional colonial power, while the Dutch Empire was an amalgamation of corporate entities. This unique structure of the Dutch Empire, however, didn't deter the British. Instead, it sparked a rivalry that would last for over a century. The two empires locked horns multiple times, most notably during the Anglo-Dutch Wars. These conflicts were, in essence, 
battles for supremacy at sea and control over lucrative trade routes. The first of these wars began in the mid-17th century, with the Dutch initially gaining the upper hand. But the tide turned in the latter half of the century. The British, with their superior naval power, began to dominate. The Dutch, despite their innovative tactics and formidable fleet, found themselves on the back foot. The last of the Anglo-Dutch wars ended in the early 18th century, with the British emerging as the victors. The Dutch Empire however was not ready to yield. Even as they grappled with the British, they faced another formidable adversary, the French. The French Revolutionary Wars of the late 18th century saw the French armies invade the Netherlands causing further turmoil, the Dutch leaders had to defend not only their homeland but also their far-flung colonies. The Dutch Empire, once a beacon of prosperity and power was now engaged in a desperate battle for survival. These conflicts marked the beginning of the end for the Dutch Empire, setting the stage for its eventual decline. But as we all know, all empires must face their downfall. The French Revolutionary Wars marked the beginning of the end for the Dutch Empire. A significant turning point in the history of the Dutch Empire, these wars would forever alter the landscape of global power. In the late 18th century, the French Revolutionary Wars erupted, a series of sweeping military conflicts that pitted the French Republic against several European powers. This tumultuous time was not kind to the Dutch, as French armies began to push into the Netherlands, invading not only their homeland but also parts of their far-flung colonies. This invasion was a significant blow to the Dutch. They had been a formidable force on the global stage, their empire built on the twin pillars of trade and transport. Their corporate colonialism, embodied in the Dutch East India Company and the Dutch West India Company, had allowed them to carve out an empire that spanned continents. But the invasion by the French shattered this grand vision. The French armies were ruthless and relentless. The once proud Dutch empire began to crumble under the weight of these assaults. The Dutch who had once held sway over vast territories, watched as their power waned, their influence dwindled, and their empire began to fragment. This was a time of great turmoil for the Dutch. Their once robust empire was now on shaky ground. Their colonies, once the jewels in their imperial crown, were now under threat. The Dutch leaders found themselves in a precarious position. They had to defend not only their homeland but also their colonies. This was a daunting task to say the least. The Dutch leaders were faced with a monumental challenge. They had to rally their forces, marshal their resources, and mount a defense against the French onslaught. This was a test of their mettle, a test of their resolve, a test of their will to endure. Despite their losses, the Dutch leaders were not ready to give up just yet. They were down, but not out. They were battered, but not broken. They were ready to fight, ready to defend their empire, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. The Dutch Empire may have been on the brink of collapse but its spirit was still very much alive. In the wake of their defeat, the Dutch leaders had to make some tough decisions. The loss of power was a severe blow to the Dutch Empire but it was not the end. The French Revolutionary Wars had left their mark and yet, the Dutch spirit remained unbroken. After the French armies invaded the Netherlands and parts of the Dutch colonies, the Dutch leaders found themselves in a position where they had to defend not just their colonies, but their homeland too. It was a time of turmoil and uncertainty, but it was also a time of resilience and determination. Perhaps the most notable decision made during this period was the French restoration of the Dutch East India Company, or the VOC, in Indonesia and Suriname. Despite the pervasive influence of the French, these territories remained under Dutch control. This was a testament to the strength and tenacity of the Dutch leaders, and their unwavering commitment to their empire. The aftermath of the Dutch Empire's fall was undeniably challenging. Yet, in the face of adversity, the Dutch proved themselves to be resourceful and resilient. They managed to hold on to their colonies in Indonesia and Suriname, demonstrating their strategic acumen and their ability to adapt to changing circumstances. But what about the legacy of the Dutch Empire? Well, it's all around us. From the architectural marvels that dot the landscapes of Indonesia and Suriname, to the economic systems that still bear the marks of Dutch influence, the legacy of the Dutch Empire is alive and well. The Dutch Golden Age may be a thing of the past, but its impact is still felt today. The empire may have fallen but its influence has seeped into every corner of the modern world. The Dutch Empire's commitment to trade, transport and exploration has shaped the way we understand and interact with the world around us. 
The Dutch Empire may have fallen, but its legacy continues to shape the world we live in today. The Dutch Golden Age may be over, but its spirit, its resilience and its legacy are far from forgotten.